Boker Tov, Yom Tov, Zarim Tovim, and Laila Tov. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Carrie. I hope this finds you well wherever you are at in the world. I'm coming to you from the proof room again, which is where I seem to be coming from a lot lately. But I, I see many conversations now, and I see different verses that pop up, and um, I know that it's my heart to share everything that I can, but the time that it takes to be able to present these things to you, it is lengthy, and as you watch these things, you can see that it takes me sometimes 30 to 40 minutes to break down one verse. But I wanted to share something first before I show you the verse that I am going to be breaking down for you in this session. I wanted to talk to you about our view on God. And it's something that I have been contemplating for a bit because as we are maturing, when we were in our younger years, and I'm even talking about mankind as a whole, even if you want to look at it a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, or even longer. Anything that is outside of something that we have as a limited perspective of ourself can easily be labeled as God. Anything. Uh, if a being shows up and is levitating and can transmute things and make things material out of thin air, um, can walk on water, doing these things that defy what our limitations are about ourselves, we deify them. And we are now starting to come within a knowledge that is being revealed to us through the Spirit within us that we are divine in nature. And the only thing that is holding us back is our own limitations that we put upon ourselves because we are creator beings. And we diminish ourselves by that which we believe, that which we've been programmed to believe, that which we think about ourselves. And it's time to expand that view of who we are and our potential of our being and our becoming. Because what we looked at as ourselves before is no longer serving us because the greater revelation is coming. It is time to be set free from the lower constructs of which have held us and bound us and kept us in the lower waters of chaos. It is time for our rising as the second exodus up and out of the lower narrative to proclaim and claim and walk in our birthright, our inheritance of who we are and who we've been kept from becoming because the religious standards has held to a limited construct of an English interpretation that really leaves um, it leaves things empty and hollow. There is so much lost in translation. But I'm speaking to those who are the brave ones that are willing to wrestle and challenge the narrative that have been presented to us. Those who are happy with where they are at right now in their constructs of the religion that they found themselves in and even with the English interpretation of the Bible I'm not really speaking to them I would love to be able to share this but they are uh, choosing to be in that narrative and there's many of us that are exodusing out of it because the Spirit's been telling us something contrary and um, those of us who want the truth at all costs are listening to the Spirit as it is drawing us away from the bondage that we've been in into a liberty and a freedom by revealing to us who we truly are so that we can escape this author um, this this paradigm that we are in that is trying to limit us and restrict us and uh, diminish us every single step that we take taking away our freedoms and our liberties and in a system that we are meant to flourish in so Here's another scripture that I wanted to bring forth so that we can begin to change, change the narrative and change the way we think about ourselves. We are looking at Deuteronomy chapter 32, 39. In the mechanical translation, it says, See now that I, I, he, and no God besides me, I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal, and none from my hand who can deliver. That's the mechanical translation. And it looks like, as you probably saw, that I was skipping words. Well, those words were actually added for grammatical purposes, and they were not in the original writings at all. So even there is, no, and I, you know, even am, those that's all added for grammatical purposes. 
So in looking at this, let's take a look at it word by word and see what's going on here. When we look at a verse, uh, it's always important to see where we start in the beginning because the beginning of the thought is going to be carrying through the entire verse. So in this first word, it's the word C. Now C, when we take a look at it in its root structure, is a resh aleph hey. Now, uh, if you've watched anything else that I've shared before, this hey, this revelation that is usually within the static root word, uh, which is source, it's a representation of the place without distortions where creator would be, um, potentiality, neither distortion to the right, to the left, uh, in duality whatsoever. This is center. This is where we would have peace that goes beyond all understanding as the place of source and creator from that place of totality without duality. So in the root word, it's showing us that this word to see, when we look at the letters, resh means the poor and the destitute. That's one meaning. It means also to be raised up, to be the top, the head, and first fruit. Then we have the Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph. And it means one. It also means a thousand. Paleo, it is a strong leader. And it also means one who has been yoked, tamed, one who has been taught, so they teach. And it means they are associated to and with the Aleph, meaning they are as one, as a strong leader. It also is a representation of uh, the spirit, as in spirit breath. Both the um, Aleph and the He have to do with the spirit breath. So if you need to connect this to something uh, that is tangible for you, you can think about the Holy Spirit drawing you. So as the spirit breath, because that's literally what spirit means, it means breath or to breathe, uh, you have one is the inhale and the other is the exhale. So inhaling the revelation and then exhaling it to reveal it. So that's why in the beginning, in Genesis, the very first word doesn't start with the Aleph because the inhale had to happen of the Spirit in order to speak the word Bereshit. Um, bet, uh, the first letter means to build. So the inhale of the Spirit then exhaled the word Bereshit, which means in the beginning, build the head. Build the top, the first um, anyway, segue there, but this <laughs> Rosh is part of that. Building the head through the spirit inhale and exhale gives you the ability to see. And this is actually where we would get the word Ra from. So anybody that has looked into the Law of One material, anybody that has connected to Egypt, there are many things that connect here that we have been kept away from. And we have been told through church doctrine that these would be considered doctrines of demons because they are outside of the confinement of the Church of Rome of what they agree to and disagree with through the theology they're wanting to present to people. So being able to see is one who has been raised up that has the spirit inhale and the exhale and this allows you to see. So this is the root of this word and you can see the first time it was used was in Genesis 1-4, and saw Elohim, Aleph Tav, that light was good. Uh, we've been talking about the Elohim and who we are and connecting it to Psalm 82-6, that we are the Elohim. And we are building through the Aleph Tav, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and the last. This is a summary of the language. Hence why we're using this to teach from, because this is how we're being raised up as Elohim, because we came in as formless and void, and we need to remember who we are, and we need to build ourselves back up to become standing ones in that knowledge, in revelation of who we are. So in this very verse verse, there is a principle of seeing here, but the hay was a removed. And again, the hay, the Father's teaching of source, the, connect and the connectivity to our higher self was removed. And the reason why it was removed is that is the very thing that we are hunting and chasing for, the catalyst in our becoming and knowing who we are. That was a driving force in our searching and finding in coming here as formless and void. So hopefully you can connect to that. But it was removed, and in place was a vav. Now since this is on the suffix side, 
This is telling us that we need to vav, connect, to the Father. Connect to the Father's teaching. This is already letting us know that this is a mature message meant for those who have already reached the age of accountability, meaning you've already arrived at Mother's teaching because it's through the Mother that you go to the Father. Yeshua represented that. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. He was a representation of Mother and Mother's teaching of the minimum requirement of obtaining the uh, I say it all the time because there, it's the only way I can seem to be able to relate this to people so they can connect to it. He came to teach them the golden rule. Teach others and teach them how to uh, relate to others how they want to be related. And again, I talk about this and it seems silly, but I know that if I go punch somebody in the face, I'm going to probably get punched right back. Mother teaches you how to... <laughs> not do those things and that if you want kindness you're going to exude kindness if you want love you're going to exude love so this is somebody that's already gone through that and this is saying if you want to see you need to connect to father here's a separator this has to do with height and depth that is um, a principle this is one that is connected to us becoming the wife you are already in bride status. Mother teaches you how to become the bride in your set-apart time, which is a betrothal, because back in Hebrew thought, if you were betrothed, you were technically as if already married. You just hadn't consummated yet. You hadn't gone into the intimate chambers yet. You were still in the process of really making your wedding gown. So this is one who's already in that process, and this is saying it's time to connect. And that leads us actually right to the next thing. So see that there has been a separation that has occurred, but this is for the mature that are becoming the wife. See now. And we have, this is beautiful, we have the word that is now. And I'm going to show you the, the tracing of this so you can um, see where it comes from, what's going on here. Uh, this is a now moment, meaning if you see this now, in your now moment, at this time. It comes from et, which means time. And ein tov is that in time we are to see the covenant. The covenant of the Father, the covenant of one love, the sign, signature, and frequency of those who are exempt from judgment. That's what the tov is. And it, the reason why it's exempt from judgment is that Father Source doesn't judge. Source is unconditional love. Source cannot judge its own creation because it is of love. So all the judging happens while we're down here in the flesh. This is how the Elohim are becoming the Elohim by judging what is good, what is evil, what is right, what is wrong, what is black, what is white, in determining these this system of duality so we can render everything clear back into the state of neutrality which is that uh, place of source in creation without distortion meaning no good no evil no right no wrong meaning everything is at oneness so this is the ability to see that covenant that will mark you as one who is exempt from judgment and then again, this is the static lump of clay as source, as is, the center of your being, of who you are that hasn't really been activated yet um, because we're going back to that place of source. And what does this look like when it is written? Well, the hay has been added to it. So if you remember, the hay was removed from up here. There was a separation that occurred that there's something happening to those who are becoming the wife that are past the bride status, that are in the process of becoming that which is the full-on intimacy as setting up as the Queen of Heaven. And this is now, the revelation is given to you now. If you can see it, you can become it. It has been given to you now, in time, for those who would have the eye to see this through the Spirit. The Spirit, it is being revealed to you Inhale this revelation as it's being exhaled and revealed to you in time. Now, we have the diamond on top. This is a uh, cantillation mark. But when you look into this, this actually means a gift from God. It is one that does mean quadrated, and this connects directly to the 144,000. 
So this is speaking to the 144,000. So if you can see this now, this is the process of us becoming the 144,000. Then we go into the word that. And this seems very, very simple. Uh, you would look over this word, but this is the Kaf and the yo. These are two letter symbols that mean power. One is the grasping, and the one is giving. And so the Kaf is the grasping, and the yod is the giving. And in this, this is a hand, and uh, Kaf means to yoke, and to tame, or to be bent. And since it is spelled by the letters Kaf Pei, the Pei is the mouth. So this is the mouth that speaks revelation. So they have bent themselves to the mouth that is speaking revelation of the sacred languages that give you, give, yod. Uh, this is also a letter that means the power, means, and direction, the open hand that gives it. So they've grasped from the open hand that is giving them a vision to give them the power, means, and direction that they need to deal with this hey, this revelation that they received now, which is the Father's teaching. Now, I had a question about what the Father's teaching is. The Father's teaching is the deep dive into the language. This is where we're being able to see what letters are being deleted and added from the root, and why, and the position, and what the depth of it is. Are we talking about our process of becoming the bride? Are we talking about becoming the wife? Are we talking about the inside of us in our formation, the outside of us? Father reveals all the deep waters. And it's about the internal orientation of finding that which is inside of us, the deep waters, the deep revealing, that is actually the one that reveals to us that we are Elohim, that we are a fractal of source in Creator, experiencing the creation that we presented, uh, that we created ourselves. And now we're experiencing our own creation as different points of attention in our creation. Because now this revelation is being revealed for those who would grasp a hold of this powerful vision that's being presented to those who would have an open hand that gives and not takes. This also means a brandishing or a burnishing. And this is uh, really important because this connects to the seraphim. These are things that are marking us, that are changing us as ones who have been marked through that which we are in gathering. Hence why we are grasping a hold of these things that are going to mark us. It's a, it's a branding of, yeah, we have changed. We are different. We have been given power because of the revelation that came, because this is a gift from God for our now, if you have the eyes to see. Then we go into Ani Ani. And anything that things, anytime something has stressed uh, and it's been twice. This is of double importance, but there's something even deeper here. Whenever you see things double like this, one is referring to mother and the other is referring to father. They are two that have been seamlessly divided, but are actually one. But they are both represented here. I, mother, I, father, who are one will be found in the spiritual path. Noon has to do with the spiritual path, but it also has to do with us in our flesh. But this is the risen flesh. So I, I, I am one who took the spiritual path. I have risen my beast ego nature into a risen flesh nature as one who gives. I, second, as father am one on the spiritual path that gives power, means, and direction. Then that's the word he. I find this interesting because in its simple definition, it means he, she, or it. But there's a deeper revelation here connected to Aramaic and our becoming. It also means one who turns. And when you look at this, this is the spirit breath. Hava also means to breathe. This is literally the word for breathe. Hava. And so we have the exhale connected to the inhale of the spirit breath, the revelation that connects to the oneness principle, because again, Aleph means one. So the revelation connected to the oneness principle of one who turns.
And then we have this beautiful 369 that my husband has so eloquently shared in many of his teachings. This means to become nothing. And this is the exact word that is used when it says that Enoch was, and then he was not. And the very first time this is used is in Genesis 2.5. But I find it very interesting that in Genesis 2.4, I'm not going to go there right now, but Genesis 2.4 is the very first time that we see yod heh vav -Hey. The very first time the Tetragrammaton is mentioned is in Genesis 2.4. Then we see that there was nothing, but yet this word abed meaning to serve and to work and do, there's a lament added in front of it. So there was instruction given, which was the work to do through the language, the all through the Tav, the beginning letter, and the last letter, the beginning, and the end, the alpha and omega, the aleph, and the tav. Alpha and omega is just Greek, and in Aramaic it literally says the aleph and the tav. So the work and the deed of the aleph tav is the instruction. But there was no instruction. I've shared with you before that yod heh vav -Hey is the teaching pattern instruction of mother and father that has come to show us how to become Elohim. So this nothing is very important for us to understand because here is um, talking about the Elohim through the Alef Tav becoming nothing. And this is exactly, and God took Enoch because Enoch became nothing. We are talking about the beast ego here. And I love this right here, just showing this. Bringing to nothing the instructions, because Lamed means to instruct, it also means teaching shepherd that has authority, it also means the letters of light that teach us to become nothing. This is the diminishing of the ego, the, the self less, to become nothing, to be non-existent. This is huge, a non-entity. Only self identifies in an entity. Only the ego identifies as an entity. So this is the process of becoming less of self. So in going into this, again, So I, as mother, and I, as father, who have turned, have become nothing, a non-entity, a non-entity. And the valve in front is the place where we connect to mother in our journey, in teachability, and in humility, because that's the process of starting us to becoming a non-entity. And this is very, very important for us to grasp as understanding that we are Elohim. Elohim is nothing. And what I mean by that, in becoming Elohim, we cannot have ego. Ego would take this knowledge and twist it and turn it and use it and abuse it, which would be the very exact opposite of who Elohim are. They have become nothing. They have become uh, no entity, no ego. And in that, that is what's allowed them to become God. And again, like I said in the beginning, we deify things that are things that we don't understand due to our own limitation in our mindset. And when you look at what God really means, Aleph means strong and strength. Lamed means leader, teacher, authority. So strong, le strong leaders who are teachers and have authority. That is God. So let's take this, this uh, word that we have elevated to something to bring it into something that we can comprehend that we can attach ourselves to because we are, we are growing up and maturing and we can handle this now. We couldn't have handled this even 10 years ago. We definitely couldn't have handled this, you know, 100 years ago. I mean, look at all the wars that were created. 
This is a mature principle that is meant to be revealed to us to give us the power to complete our journey out of the waters of chaos into the waters above. But we cannot take ego with us. We need to be coming as nothing. That is who the Elohim are because they've become one. They were instructed in the way the revelation came to them and then they became of the Yod Mem, which is a sea, which is actually a symbol of the Queen of Heaven. So this is those who have completed their journey that are, sat, are seated at the right hand of the Father as His righteous ones. Then we have the word besides me. And we need to take a look at this word because in it, when you look at it in this form, it's against, me, against, by, from, me, mine, of, that I take and unto. But there's more going on here. This word, same spelling, means a standing place. A standing place. You wondered partly why our name on our YouTube channel is the stand, one to one. It's from this. A spot is being fixed to take one's stand. So let's connect this back into here, what we were looking at. As Elohim, I take my stand because I have been given power, means, and direction from the Father because it's on the suff suffix side. And this also means the hand that gives. This is important. The Elohim do not take, they give. They make their stand in a giving nature. And Ein Mem is also the word that means people, tribesmen, specifically of Jacob, the flock those who have the eyes to see while they are in the waters of chaos because they found the door that opened this revelation up to them so that they could see that they were weak and feeble and a revelation was given to them to deliver them of their weak and feeble state because power was given to them by the Father through Father's teaching the power means and direction to become one who has elevated their flesh nature they took the seed that was given to them, the spiritual seed, to sprout, to give them a strong base to stand upon through the power that was given to them by the Father. So you can see in this process of becoming nothing as the Elohim, meaning they are humbled, they ha they're meek, they have power under control, the ego doesn't rule them, they are taking their stand. And then it goes into I, again, as they have become one, through the spiritual path, having power given to them as those who give and do not take, kill. This is the root, or the root is actually mem vavtav, and it means to die. But look at what was added, the olive. This again is validating that this is death to the ego of self in order to become one. And in the world, once they become one, then they become a representation of mother, because Aleph Mem means mother, Am. Ab is father, Am is mother. So in dying to self, which is what Yeshua did, he came to present himself as mother. And that is what this whole progression is in becoming Elohim, in making your stand, because you become nothing, because you went through the process of becoming one through the spiritual path, where you were given power because you died to self and became one as a representation now of mother in the earth. This, this yod that was placed on the inside activating source in you was the power, means, and direction that you needed because it was given to you. It was given to you by the Father through His teaching, hence why it's on the suffix side, to be able to die to self. It gave you the power to see it so you could become it. Then you could become one. Then you are made alive. Here's the root Chai, for life. Look what was added. Well, we have the hay on the father's side, the hay that was taken from us, 
originally that we were searching for, it has now been given back. This means that you are connected to your higher self through the revelation that comes from the Father's teaching as He shows you through His teaching and being able to see the hidden that is within the sacred languages how to have life. This is incredible. There's our diamond again. This is related to the 144,000 that are a gift from God. This life Life is a gift from God. The 144,000 are a gift from God because they come having the Father's revelation and will be revealed as those walking in the Father's power. They connected to Mother in humility. They became one because the olive again is added. They became part of one, the living. Now, olive het is also the Hebrew word for brother. So this is the brotherhood of the living. And again, this is frequency. So this isn't saying, this isn't excluding females. This has to do with those who have become one, who have found the window. The window. And I say that because chet in Hebrew means window. It means to divide and to separate. So these are of the brotherhood who are of one that when they saw through the window of that which was separating that they were able to divide what is and what is not in order to find life this is a gift from God this yod has also been made double there is two visions here that became one now this is profound because mother gives her 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 mother gives her power to you father gives his power to you through the teachings of yod heh vav -Hey, the teaching pattern, but these have now been given to you two visions that have become one, that are part of life in the revelation that was brought. Again, it's all about becoming one. That is the whole thing. When Yeshua came to teach us the way, it was the way of one. But of course, they dropped the one off to just call it the way, and it could be any which way that someone would determine based on what the Church of Rome was saying that it was. But it was called the way of one, the brotherhood of one, those who are set on the outside versus the ones who are on the inside of being and becoming this principle. Then we get into the word wound. Wound is memhet zadi, and that is the root. But look at this. This is I love this. So, machatz, meaning to smite through, wound severely, and to shatter. Well, in the root, it has a fallen zadi, which means that this is something that you hunt and chase, but this was initially hunting and chasing in the world. This isn't the spiritual hunt and chase and journey. This is the one that happens in the material world, which will wound you severely. But there is a resolve in it. And I, I just love this. Look how it's written. It is now an elevated zadi. So this is saying, this is a spiritual path that you hunt and chase and journey on to find that which will mark you, tav, spelled tav vav, which literally means to mark, as one who is exempt from judgment. Because you took the spiritual path, you were marked with the covenant of the Father, it was revealed to you, you took it, you did something with it, and it changed your frequency. So now you carry the mark, the signature frequency, the sine wave change, the fingerprint of the Father, of His teaching, of His becoming, exempt from judgment as He's given you His power as one who gives the power, means, and direction to others. Then we go back into I again. Oh, well, let me finish this up here. Sorry about that. Here's the waters of chaos. This is Mem. This is the living water teachings. Now, Mem is spelled with two letters. It's a Mem and a Mem Sofit. The Mem Sofit is hidden behind. Sof, the root of Sofit, means a lentil or a seal or the threshold that you cross over into the inside waters the ones that are no longer chaotic and that's a representation of father's teachings but they have to be hidden by the mother because you can't come to them until you go through the mother first to meet her standard measurement and you can only do that by approaching and connecting to her in humility by being teachable 
So in the waters of chaos, we are wounded. There's division that happens in the water of chaos while we were in the material realm of hunting and chasing. But the resolve came because the spiritual path, the journey presented itself to us through the revelation given to the Father by His teachings to say, hey, there's a higher way. Let's take this higher spiritual path. Let's not seek things in the material world. Let's hunt and chase on the spiritual journey that will produce the mark that we all seek that gives you power. Then we're back in that place of staying connected to Mother in the oneness principle through the spiritual path of being given power. And I heal. Now look at this. <laughs> Rafa. That's the root. Resh, pe, pe, Aleph, to heal. But look what's added. The Aleph is added. So we went from the place of source static, needing to be healed, to it being the active status that becoming one is healing what? Well, my husband has said it many times in many of his teachings, it's healing the head wound, because the resh really means the head. It means the top, the highest, also means ones who's poor and destitute. So, when we become one, when we know and we've connected to that, as a representation of being those who are in the world, as representations of walking as mother, as one with her, this was raised, raised us up from our poor and destitute nature to be a first fruit leader through the mouth that speaks the sacred languages. This pay is not a fallen pay. This is one of those letters that can either be risen or fallen. This is because it's a risen pay. This is talking about a set apart language that isn't common of the material world. This is the sacred languages that brings the revelation of oneness. Pay can be spelled pay hey or pay olive, the constituent letters that make up the symbol. So if that didn't make sense, A in the English language isn't spelled by anything. It's just an A. Every single letter in Hebrew is spelled by other letters. So the olive is made up of olive lamed pay, the resh is uh, spelled by uh, resh olive sheen, pay is spelled by pay hey or pay Aleph, the inhale and the exhale of the spirit breath, and then we're back to the Aleph again. So this is the mouth that is speaking, the revelation that again leads to oneness. Oneness is what is going to heal our separation, the ego. That is the healing that we need because we, we went through the experience finding and seeing that we were separated and now we're becoming back one again. This is healing our head wound. This is the head wound was the place of forgetting. So healing it, meaning our remembering, is going to be coming as we pick up, adopt, and become one. And the only way that we can do that, here's the resolve, you guys. I love how the language writes this. We have to become nothing. So in healing us and becoming one, we have to lose and become a non-entity by staying humble and teachable by becoming one which gives us the power to overcome our fallen flesh. Because our fallen flesh, since this is a noon so feet, is what is telling us that we're separated. It. And that is the process. The oneness process is the process of giving us the power to overcome this so that we can be just like Enoch who was and then who was not. No longer ego, no longer self, healed and whole as becoming one. And I should say too that these three letters by themselves, Rafa for healing, if you were to reorganize the letters so uh, through, uh, through Gematria, through Gematria, meaning the same total so each letter has a number total assigned to them. So each word has a total um, of the numbers when you add them together that comes with a summation. Well, Rafa and Para are the same in that they mean fruit. One has got an Aleph, the other one has a hay. Just like 
the pay has a pay all of for a pay hay so this is also telling us that through our healing we will produce fruit and the fruit of the spirit as representat represented by the olive. The olive is a representation of the spirit. So the healing in becoming nothing and then we talk about my hand who can deliver. Well Yod Dalit is hand and it wor means work and deed of the hand. Mem talks about the waters, the waters of chaos. So in the waters of chaos, Mother presents her teachings that are the work and deed of our hand. And when you see this right here, this is such an important word. We've had many people that say that, you know, works are a wrong thing, that we are not supposed to be doing works, that Jesus did all of that for us. That is not true. I recently released something about the one where it says our righteousness are as filthy rags, which is not it at all that was mistranslated intentionally so that we wouldn't get out of our butts to do something. We need to be active and proactive in what we do because it is the work and the deed of our hand to get out of the waters of chaos. Mother shows us, okay guys, you are in chaos. I need to teach you the golden rule so that you don't have chaos with people. And then the Father's teaching is behind so you no longer have chaos within yourself. But this is going to be having something you do by the work and deed of your own hand. Now we have a representation of the covenant of the pieces. And a good way for you to, to, to think of this is when uh, Abraham was receiving the promise from the Father and the, um, he had to walk, there was the walking of the pieces where the animals were divided. That was a spiritual concept that was trying to be relayed to us. That these pieces were the separation of mother and the separation of father due to our lack of maturation. Mother has to present her way until we accept and become the golden rule so that we can receive the higher vision of the father. Now this is going deeper, guys, because this is really the description of the Aleph. You can't see this. Or maybe you can, but Aleph is made of three parts. A higher vision, the Yod on top, that is Vav, separated, but is supposed to be connected to the lower vision, below. And the two of them, the two visions, the upper and the lower, connected by the Vav, the Vav that connects. Well, here we have the two visions that have been divided, and in the middle is the door, the door between both of them that were revealed to you, the power of mother's rev uh, vision, which is the door to the father's vision, which is the work and deed of your hand, because they are supposed to have single vision, no longer dual, but in becoming one. And that is why we have this va or yod here, that Degesh means there's two of them that have become one. So again, dual power that is being given, but you got to go through the door of revelation to deal with your feeble state to realize that you are to deliver yourself from it so the Father can give him your power. This is the work indeed of your hand to deliver you out of the waters of chaos. And then we have the word deliver, which is kind of like you would actually literally have to look at the definition of the Dalit to see that this literally has the word deliver in it. So this is again stressing it. So the work and deed of your hand to deliver yourself from the waters of chaos by hunting and chasing and going on the spiritual journey, the two spiritual paths, again this is a double zadi, the spiritual path hunting and chasing a mother, hunting and chasing a father that gives you the power through the instruction, the letters of light that gives you the authority to deliver yourselves from the water of chaos by the work and deed of your hand. And to finish it up, just so that we can take a look about Natsal, this is what is most amazing here. This has a noon on it in the root, in the static position, lump of clay, as source, as creator, as uh, no distortions, the place of rest that we would enter into. The noon is here, so when it goes into the written form and the noon isn't, it's saying that 
the noon needs to be here, but since it's not, this is a highly spiritual issue that has absolutely nothing to do with your flesh, which is why we are delivering ourselves and becoming nothing of our lower flesh, of ego. This is a highly spiritual matter, but you're going to have to find it in the waters of chaos. It has nothing to do with the flesh nature. It's all of spiritual. You are only going to deliver yourselves through the spiritual journey that you hunt and chase for. It's nothing that you are doing in the flesh. And so when people are relating it to the works, there's nothing that your works can do to deliver you. Like you can go to a soup kitchen. You can, you can serve the homeless. You can feed the homeless. You can provide shelter for them. But that's everything that you're doing in the flesh. That has nothing to do with the spiritual principle that will deliver you out of the waters of chaos. Because the work and de deed of your hand is that which you need to become nothing on the inside. To be none of flesh anymore. To eliminate the ego nature by itself so that we can become nothing just like Enoch did. So this whole verse is speaking about us those who would have the eyes to see that are given the revelation now because this revelation is a gift of God. This is the power that we are branded with by grasping a hold of this vision. I am, I, mother, I, father, am it he, she that has turned through the spirit breath, the revelation that came that connected me to the oneness principle so that I can, in humility, connect to the fact that I am really nothing, and that I am nothing, and yet that I am everything as being Elohim, the strong leader teaching shepherds who are going to reveal the process of becoming the queen of heaven in humility, in losing the identity of self-ego, in becoming one as source, as El. This is my stand that I am making as part of the tribesmen that were once dimmed but went through the door of revelation that gave me the power to see who I am of being one as I chose to take the spiritual path that gave me the power in order to die to self so that I could adopt this principle of oneness and become a representation of mother in the earth just like Yeshua and because I connected in humility to this oneness principle I now have life and I have abundance. I have it abundantly because it was given to me as a gift of God. And the Father's teaching, the deep waters, the revelation of this was given to me as a gift so that I could be, gift, be a gift to the world as 144,000. I was wounded by the teachings that I went through, but that was to pierce me so that I could be marked as one who no longer judges. I'm exempt from judging because I went through the process and I came out of the waters of chaos where I found life. I set myself apart by the spiritual journey I took that marked me with the power that came from Father. As I am one who gives, I stand in my humble and teachable position as one who took the spiritual path, no longer in the lower beast ego nature, having the power that was given to me as I was healed in finding the oneness because it was really the division that kept me apart that made me sick this healed my infirmity and my head wound through the sacred languages and now I have been given the mouth to speak the revelation of becoming one because I became nothing in the process and I always connect as being one who is humble and teachable in my process of becoming nothing this was the work indeed of my hand as I was in the waters of chaos, but then I delivered myself from the waters of chaos through the visions that were given to me, the door that I went through on the inside to deliver myself from the weak and feeble state so I didn't have to be part of the waters of chaos anymore because I took the spiritual path. I hunt, I went hunting and I chased after what I needed in my journey the two spiritual pathways of mother and father that became one that gave me the power as a teaching shepherd of light that instructed me so that I could deliver myself. That is what this verse is saying. This is an incredible revelation to us for those who would have the eyes to see now the height and depth that is being revealed to us as a gift 
from God in our now. Shalom, shalom, and namaste.